Oak Grove Unified Students, Families, and Staff. I'm Santi Soriano with Ego News, and I'm here to provide you with a district update. Now, on Ego News, we focus on healthy minds, healthy bodies, and healthy learning, as well as keeping you updated on district activities. This is your district update for August 27th, 2021. Well, today we express our sincere gratitude. We want to thank everyone who is out there getting or has been getting vaccinated, diligently wearing masks, and of course, washing hands. Because of everyone's hard work and diligence, all 67 schools are now open with in-person learning, as well as athletics and extracurricular activities. We all certainly have more work cut out for us, and by working together as a community, we will make it through and stay focused on student growth and student learning. Now, today's letter is going to include some frequently asked questions, recently posed, plus our responses. So let's get to it. All right, first question. Has the Elk Grove Unified School District COVID-19 plan or safety plan been updated? Yes. So please take a moment to review the updates for the COVID-19 symptom and quarantine decision forest. It's no longer a tree, it's now a forest for K through 12 schools. And this is reflected in our revised COVID-19 safety plan. Um, there are also some updates in our quarantining and modified quarantine, quor <laughs> I can't say it, quarantining protocols. So take a look there. It's on our lot, the link is in the letter. Uh, it's on our website as well under our COVID-19 tab. Um, next question, will workers in TK through 12 schools be required to show proof of vaccination or be subjected to testing? Yes, Elk Grove Unified is preparing for compliance with the uh, California Department of Public Health order that came from August 11th that requires all TK through 12 public schools to verify and track the vaccination status of all paid and unpaid workers. All right, next question. How can parents help reduce exposure to COVID-19 in our schools? Awesome question. Well, follow the guidance. Uh, if your child has a fever or is showing COVID-like symptoms, students should not come to school and parents are encouraged to contact their healthcare provider and also to contact their school. Now, please reference the EGUSD COVID-19 safety plan for the health screening information. And we also highly encourage those eligible, of course, to get vaccinated. All right, next question. Is there a simpler version of the symptom decision forest? that parents can use? Well, yes, we've simplified the symptom decision forest for tree number one. Essentially, if your child presents with any of the COVID-19 symptoms, keep them at home and contact your healthcare provider and or have your child tested. A negative rapid antigen test will further require a negative PCR test. Just wanna make sure everybody's clear on that. A negative rapid antigen test means you're still going to need to go get the PCR test. So, um, and that's before you can send them back to school. And of course, you can also talk to your healthcare provider before they go to school um, to make sure your healthcare provider provides the information that uh, would indicate that you they would be cleared to go to school. No COVID. Um, now, this also applies to all staff. So here in our letter is a link to the shortened version. You can print it out at home. It's only one page, very simple. And the full version will be in the EGUSD COVID-19 safety plan. So you can take a look at it there. All right, next question. Where can parents in the community find vaccination clinics? Well, every day there's a free Kaiser Permanente COVID-19 vaccine clinic at the Bruceville Center Vaccination Station from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. You can also visit myturn.ca.gov for other locations. And then tomorrow, August 28th, there is a free 12 and up kids and adults code vaccination event happening at the NCNW Sacramento Valley section and La Familia Family Counseling Center in conjunction with the Good Health Wins program. Uh, they are hosting a free 12 and up kids and adult COVID vaccination event. Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson vaccines will be provided by the Sacramento Department of Public Health and Curative. And the event will be held from 9 a.m. to noon at Mac Valley at Mac Road Valley 
High Community Center that's located at 7833 Center Parkway in Sacramento. And you can click in the link. There's a click. Uh, there's a link to register. You can click there and get registered. And there's also a flyer that you can click on uh, and print that out for more information. There's also a statewide COVID-19 hotline. A statewide COVID-19 hotline is available at 833-422-4255 for parents uh, to call with questions about COVID-19. So if you've got any questions, you're curious, you know, what about this? What about that? Well, instead of calling your school, you can just call their hotline. They're prepared to answer your questions about COVID. Um, and our schools, you know, are really busy right now. Um, just managing the day-to-day -day work that we have. Um, and so if you really have a particular COVID-related question, health-related question, call that hotline. They'll be able to answer, uh, answer your questions, hopefully. Again, that number is 833-422-4255. It's the statewide COVID-19 hotline. Uh, the hotline is open seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right. Last part of uh, vaccinations, the federal department, the Federal Drug Administration approved the first COVID-19 vaccine on uh, and on August 23rd, the FDA approved the first COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine has been known as the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine and will now be marketed as Comirnaty. Uh, and for the prevention of COVID-19 disease in individuals 16 years of age and older. The vaccine also continues to be available under emergency use authorization, uh, including for individuals 12 through 15 years of age and for the administration of a third dose in certain immunocompromised individuals. And there's a link to the FDA press release if you wanna check that out too. All right, next question. Are there community testing sites parents and students can go instead of the school? Absolutely. Some schools are inundated with testing requirements for modified quarantine uh, situations and may not be available for symptomatic testing. In these cases, you may get testing at any of these free community sites that are listed in the letter. There's a link there to the Sacramento County Symptom Screening Mobile Testing Site. So you want to check that out. And uh, if you have just have symptoms, you think it's COVID related, you can go to one of those testing sites to get your test. All right, how about at the school site? Is testing available at the school site? Well, currently testing is limited to students who become symptomatic at school, not before school. They, If they happen to be in school and they show symptoms or start to show symptoms, then they're sent to the COVID symptom isolation room. We call it the cozy room. And students also identified as close contacts are um, and placed on a modified quarantine and or for athletics, those students have access to testing at the school site. Now, parents can expedite the process of testing by providing an online consent. Um, and there's a pre-registration link that we included in the, in the uh, letter that's going out today. So you can get pre-registered in the event that you know, your child suddenly at school shows symptoms and is sent to the cozy room, they, your consent would be there and then students can get tested. Uh, and of course, that's only if testing is warranted while at school. All right, will there be a pre preemptive testing for athletics? Well, yes, according to recommendations from the California Department of Public Health and further outlined in the Sacramento County Public Health Supplemental TK uh, through 12 guidance from August 6th, Non-vaccinated individuals competing in high-risk sports should receive preemptive testing. So beginning the week of August 23rd, which was this past week, uh, EGUSD fall, sports, uh, fall sport athletes competing in football and water polo will need to test if they do not show proof of vaccinated status. Now, this testing will be conducted at our sites similar to the testing all EGUSD athletes performed in the spring of 2021, the earlier this, this last school year. All right, next question. During contact tracing, are protocols for athletics in outdoor environments different from indoors? Well, no. According to the Sacramento County Public Health Supplemental TK through 12 guidance from August 6th, close contacts in the outdoor setting should be treated the same as indoor close contacts with regard to quarantine recommendations. Okay. 
Next question. Well, what new resources are available to parents and the community? Well, we did put this out last week, but we do want to make sure that parents know about this as well. There's a 2021 child tax credit. It's a new IRS online tool. It's now available for families to quickly check if they qualify for advanced 2021 child tax credit payments. So for more information and to access the online tool, please visit irs.gov slash child tax credit altogether 2021. All right, there's also pandemic electronic benefits transfer. It's called the P-EBT or slash, no, dash EBT. Uh, P-EBT is a federal program that gives eligible families additional food benefits on top of CalFresh food benefits and school meals. So the P-EBT card can help you make a smaller budget feel much bigger. Uh, and for more information, please visit HTTPS colon slash slash CA for California, CA, pandemic-ebt.org. And the link is in the letter. All right, another question. If I am a new parent to EGUSD, well, welcome. Uh, is there a district handbook? Well, yes, there is. The EGUSD district handbook can be found on our district's website under students, families. Uh, there was also an addendum that was added to the last year's handbook to provide updates to the non-discrimination statement and contact information for the equity compliance and Title IX officers for all the items listed. Now, additionally, the full board policies for non-discrimination, harassment, intimidation, and or bullying, which is BP 5143.3, and sexual harassment, uh, particularly related to students, um, which is BP 5145.7, were also included. And a notice, uh, notice of a student rights page uh, is also available for more information. And we have a link there to the students' rights and resources page. And that was also added to our website this last year. Now, these additions, the ones from the previous year and that addendum, have now been incorporated into this year's revised handbook or new handbook, I guess, if you will, uh, please note that each school will also have a site-specific handbook. So there's a district handbook and then there's a school handbook. And you can ask your school uh, about that particular book. Now, each year, parents will automatically be asked to confirm receipt of their district handbook through the Parent View app. Okay, another question. Can parents help with filling job positions? Yes, we need your help. We have multiple opportunities for parents and community members to be engaged in our school community. Join us today by becoming a part of the EGUSD family. Uh, see our current job openings at edjoin.org. That's E-D-J-O-I-N.org. And if you're interested in becoming a substitute teacher, that can also lead to becoming to a teacher. And for recently retired teacher by executive order, Retired teachers no longer need to wait to return to service. So please visit our substitutes webpage on becoming a substitute. Um, and then pay for EGUSD retirees right now is $200 per day. Pretty good. All right, the links are all in the letter. And there's another opportunity for parents out there. We have food and nutrition substitute positions open. Now these are short hour shifts, normally between 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. It's great for parents who want to drop their child off in the morning before school and be off work before it's time to pick them up. It's also, there's a lot of flexibility, um, you know, work when and where it's convenient for you. As a uh, food nutrition services substitute, you have the flexibility to, to decide which days and at which school sites you want to work. And then it's also fun. Uh, we have great teams. I love the food nutrition services team. In fact, they gave me these little stuffed animals or not animals, ah, stuffed vegetables and, and fruits and vegetables. Um, they're just a great team. A lot of, uh, you know, joyful people to work with. And they enjoy working with students and sharing the benefits of good nutrition and healthy eating. All right. Are there other ways that parents can help out? 
Yes, we have two important things for you. Uh, one, there's uh, information about fire relief. We have a flyer that's included in here in the letter. Um, the Sacramento County Office of Education has partnered with other educational leaders to launch a California Kids Fire Relief. It's a two week statewide effort where students and school communities throughout California are being encouraged to provide financial and emotional support to students, families, and schools impacted by the catastrophic wildfires. Students are also encouraged to send cards and personal letters of support and encouragement, which will be hand, hand delivered to students uh, and schools in their fire regions. So during this charitable effort, SCOE, which is the Sacramento County Office of Ed, is urging students and their families to send cards, personal letters, gift cards for food, clothing, gasoline, and also visa gift cards to California Kids Fire Relief, attention Ashley Slovak, care of Sacramento County Office of Education, located at 10474 Mather Boulevard or PO Box 269003, Sacramento, California 95826-9003. You can also donate by visiting www, there's a little tiny URL.com, California Kids Fire Relief, CA Kids Fire Relief. You can, the link will be available in the letter. All right. There's also humanitarian crisis relief that you can assist with. Um, due to the current humanitarian crisis happening in Afghanistan, many refugee families will soon call the Elk Grove and Sacramento region home. And many more of our community members are experiencing fear and anxiety for their family members who are still over in Afghanistan and may not be able to leave. So please visit our resource list, it's linked in the letter, for staff who are working to support uh, our families who may be in need or resettlement information and basic needs support or mental health services. And you can also reach out to um, the Family and Community Engagement Office. They have a department, uh, it's within Elk Grove Unified School District and you can help ask them for assistance. The links are in the letter. Okay, well, when can parents, and I think this is the last question, when can parents attend or listen in on the next board meeting? Well, the next board meeting will take place on Tuesday, September 7th. It'll be in person at the Robert L. Trigg Education Center. Masks will be required indoors. Uh, and the information is on our website. And then here's the last thing I wanna share. It's a good news story. Uh, and we have a little video for you. So I'll say goodbye, but make sure you watch to the end to see the, the little snippet and the little story. So this is about a new mural at Stone Lake Elementary. Stone Lake Elementary has a new mural on campus. Mark Beard, principal at Stone Lake Elementary, wanted to give his students something special when they return to school for the first time in over a year. So through a partnership between the Stone Lake PTO and the Stone Lake teachers and Franklin High School teachers and students, I believe, the team recruited a group of Franklin High School students who worked together through the summer to create a beautiful mural for the Stone Lake Hawks. All right, the story is at the end of our video. So please remember to subscribe to the Elk Grove Unified School District's YouTube channel and click on that little bell icon to receive notifications. I'm Santi Soriano, stay safe and stay healthy. Hello, my name's Mark Beard and I'm principal here at Stone Lake Elementary. Eight years here at this school and um, welcome. I, I wanted to, to make sure to show off something that's been pretty amazing um, happening over the last um, couple of months and, and that's the creation of the mural behind me. It kind of started off for me um, as a um, kind of a, a, a dream during COVID is the um, COVID time was happening and no students being here on the campus. Um, I wanted something special for them to see when they returned. When Mark came up with this idea of the painting book signs on um, a PE shed and told us that the, the budget just wasn't gonna cut it for hiring a muralist, a local muralist. I had the idea to reach out to Franklin High School. I'm a former Franklin High School student. And so I reached out to Mr. Bill. Um, go Mr. Bill, woo -woo. And so I reached out to him, I sent him an email. I told him um, Mr. Beard's idea, his inspiration. And I just said, hey, are you, do you know of any students who'd be interested in this project that would, you know, put together a budget, come up with the ideas and just really make it happen. And we got some amazing students. Lily and Connie kind of reached out first. And then from there, they brought in their friend group. 
and um, people worked on this mural for months and created, and it was really this free canvas, like, hey, what are you interested in? You can put what you want on there. We've got maybe some book spines or something that the students have read and are excited about in elementary school. And they blew us away because it not only was like book spines, but they would tip a book on its side and create an image around it and, and went so above and beyond what we ever expected. And it's just beautiful. We knew that we wanted to do a book design and that's exactly what we did. So we wanted to incorporate some characters and I am very proud about the way it came out. I've never painted a mural before, but this was a really great opportunity, not only to work on my collaboration skills, but also hopefully give the kids a piece of joy as they look at it. And the concept uh, we went with was that they really wanted to do a lot of books because that's what they wanted um, the children to do. And they thought that would be easy because books were vertical and it fit the container which was uh, more of like an accordion style, but also vertical. And conceptually, I was originally thinking the easiest way would be obviously just do all the books vertical and design the spines. However, I thought that would be too boring. So what I did was that I wanted each character to pop out of the book and be more interactive and maybe have them interact with other characters from the other books. Uh, I got involved in the project through Connie. <laughs> she was like, hey Isabel, you want to work on some paintings with me? I was like, yeah! And then I went there and I think I spent a total of 116 hours working on the mural. So. I was there a lot, like after work, <laughs> I'd be there, and then when my job was over, there, and I'd fall asleep there, and I'd eat there, and I'd burn my back there. But we finished, and it's great. I really want to help out and have fun, and thus, I decided to join and see what I could do. And seeing the result before my eyes, um, it, it really shows that, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. It was a lot of fun. I think getting to know like everyone was really fun. And we had a lot of like really fun experiences. And even though it was like really tiring and there was like, it was hot most of the days, I think overall it was just a really, really good experience. And you know, more than just like getting, you know, community service, it was really, really nice to just kind of make that kind of contribution. And we can just look at it now. We can just be like, yeah, we, we made that. So. Over the summer, um, I pretty much just worked on this mural, mural the entire time. Um, it took a lot of work and it was like really hot a lot of times, but um, it was really fun and I don't regret it. Um, yeah, I'm glad I made a lot of new friends and the overall finished product was really nice. I spent, I spent a good amount of time on the mural um, with painting with all of those people over there. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I don't paint much. I'm more towards like pencil and digital art, that kind of thing. So this kind of stuff was really a new experience for me. I found out that acrylics are painful as well as pretty good to work with. So yeah, that was good. I learned a lot about like gloss and primer, which I did not know before. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So this was a pretty good experience, and it was very good. I said good a lot of times. <laughs> Thank you, bye.